Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the write through caching pattern. So, what is caching? Caching is storing and using pre computed values. It's useful for really expensive calculations. It is meant to improve the scalability of our services. So, what is the write through pattern? When we have customers and we, we have our APIs, we define most of the times read and write APIs. We have our caching layer, we have our local persistent data store as well. The way it works with this pattern is that when the users access or try to write or they do write to one of our APIs, we're going to be, while they we're writing, we're going to be sending the data to both the caching layer as well as the persistent data store. The idea is that when we're caching that value, it's going to be accessible immediately when they happen to be using the read API. Now, this could be combined with another pattern called cache aside. When in cases where this data is not available, what is going to happen is that it's going to be accessing the persistent data store, saving that data local to our caching data store, and then returning that back to the client. Now, I covered this video specifically, as well as a few concrete examples using Redis and Memcached in previous episodes, so we'll be leaving the link to those videos in the description as well. Let's jump into the code so I can show you how this is implemented using Go. As usual, the link to this example will be listed in the description, so feel free to check it out, clone it, and play with it. So I have my to-do microservice that we have been using for a while for all the examples that we have been covering in this channel. So I'm going to be opening the readme just for the sake, but really what happened and what was implemented is a new type called task. I added it inside the memcached package. And we used to have another one where I cover the caching when using caches, a cache aside, the pattern for caching. I renamed that one to searchable task because the example that I'm going to demonstrate here is a different caching pattern. Now, the way it works is similar to the cache aside implementation where I'm going to be defining a type that happens to be defined in the same methods that our persistent data store, data store is implementing with the idea of defining sort of like a middleware, but not rather, it's like a decorator. So it's going to be wrapping the original data store. It's going to be using that as the origin in case the values are not available, and then setting the values in the, in the caching layer or getting the values from the caching layer. So let me show you. In the main, I define in this line right here, uh, this new repository, like I said, called a task in the memcached package is literally wrapping the repo that I have right here and it's just passing in some logger uh, details to, so I can show you how it's printing out, the, printing out the values. Now specifically what is happening is that when we create, which is the important part of the write through caching pattern, is that when I'm creating the value, I'm creating the value in the data store, in the original persistent data store, as well as setting the value in the a caching layer or the caching data store. The similar situation happens when I'm accessing another kind of update like methods, which in this case will be sort of like delete, for example, is deleting using the original persistent data store, and as well as deleting the value from the memcached data store. Similar, similarly with find, what I'm going to do here is applying the other pattern that again, I cover in another video called cache aside, that if you notice, I pull the value from memcached. If, it is, if that is values present, I just go ahead and return it right away. If it's not present, I pull it from the original data store and then set it right away. Now, one important thing, and I think one of the most complicated things, depending on how your API is implemented, is when you're doing updates to specific or existing records. So in this case, um, the, the easy one will be just updating the value. And in the case where the value that I'm setting is equal to the value that I'm getting uh, for, as the arguments that is, I can use that to return it back to the client. However, in the way I have it implemented right here, I'm not receiving an internal task uh, type, but rather fields that I'm going to be updating. So in this case, depending on, on what you are saving in the caching layer and what fields you are storing, you may need to change those as well. So what I'm doing here, and I'm specifically indicating it, what is going to happen if one of these steps that happens after I update the persistent data store fail? 
I'm going to have stale data. So how I'm going to how are we going to be fixing that? I will be covering that in a future episode where I just want to bring that out and make that clear because it will happen. So what should we be doing? We will figure it out in the future. For now, everything seems to be working. I want to show you that the you know the tasks are working as expected. Uh, if I open up my Swagger UI, I'm going to create a new example that says hey i'm going to try out i'm going to create example right through and i'm going to execute it what is going to happen is i'm creating the value using the persistent data store and i'm setting the value which is the uh, message that i have right here the log information that i have right here now if i go and get the id that i got from the real data store or the persistent data store, right? Both, both of them are real. Uh, I can try it out. And instead of going to the database, it's going to be calling the value, calling the value from the persistent data store. Now, when should be, we use this pattern? In cases where you know that immediately, as soon as you create a record, users may be able or maybe um, they may be able to access that data that right away. One concrete example would be when you are, maybe you have a notification service where you are sending out some sort of alert and that, uh, that alert includes data that the user is going to be reading. Well, when you're sending that alert, or rather before sending that alert, you're, you're writing that data into your persistent data store, you're writing that data into your caching data store. And when you submit the data, that data via push notification or maybe publishing to Redis or Kafka or whatever a, a message box you have, that the users will be able to immediately access that, access that value using the caching data or the cache values. So it's a way to immediately cache the values in case your customers need to access that data right away. Now, let's jump into the conclusions and let's talk a little bit more about what sh we should be doing next. So this is the right through caching pattern meant to improve scalability. You don't really need to implement it all the time, but it's always useful to understand how this can improve the scalability of your system and make things load much more, fa much more faster depending on the use case that you have. As usual, thank you for watching. And again, all the links that I just mentioned, the code to the specific repository will be in the description as well. So I will talk to you next time and take care. Stay safe.